So, good afternoon everyone. I am Ian Lawrence Gil of Gala from Philippine Science High School. And I came here together with my co-authors, John Matthews E. Oano and Crystal Green A.K. Mada. Can you stand there? So, on behalf of my research needs, we are very happy to present our research, which is, which is entitled Pectin Extraction and Characterization from Three Variants of Nicopils with Calamansi SDSC Finals. So, first off, what is pectin? So, it is a polysaccharide or a group of complex carbohydrates derivatives present in the cell wall of different plant parts which forms a gelatinous substance upon contact with any sugar or acid. So it has many applications. Specifically, it serves as a functional ingredient in food science, nutrition, cosmetics, and therapeutics. So also, it is the one present in our foods, in our jams and jellies, and it serves as a thickening agent in our ketchups and our sauce, and also as a texturizing agent for our jams and jellies. So, why did we come up with our study, or why did we extract pectin? So our country, which is the Philippines, relies on imported pectin due to the lack of viable technology to produce it locally. So as a matter of fact, according to the Department of Trading Industry in 2011, our country reported a total of 94,000 kilograms of pectin with a corresponding value of 2.2 billion pesos. So, uh, in most studies, citrus waste and apple pomace are the major sources of pectin, which are found to, to contain 15 to, 15 to 25% of pectin. But in our study, we decided to utilize mango peels because our country actually ranks top 9 among the top major mango producing countries in the world, with total uh, volumetric production, a volume production of 825,676 metric tons. So, so the three variants of mangoes that we use in our study are carbol mango, Indian mango, and apple mango. So in this study, in the extraction of pectin, there is a need to use an acidic medium for a faster extraction process. Unlike other studies which utilize uh, mineral acids such as HCl and H2SO4, in our study, we decided to use calamansi fruit, uh, the acids that are found in the calamansi juice. So our study basically aims to compare the amount of pectin that is extracted from the peels of the three mango cultivars and to determine the presence of any significant differences among um, the amount of pectin extracts from each variant and to determine the degree of esterification, equivalent weight, and the neutral sugars found in the pectin. But due to uh, unfortunately, due to certain time constraints, we only finished in the characterization part the determination of the equivalent weight. Now, our study would test common variants of mango found in the Philippines that are still not covered by existing research studies which utilize calamansi juice as the acidifier. This study would utilize calamansi juice from overripe calamansi as its acidifier because in the extraction process, a pH level of 2.5 is needed for a faster extraction. For a faster extraction. So, it is uh, much better to use overripe calamansi because Overall calamansi are more acidic compared to just those right ones. So our study will only cover pectin extraction from those three mango cultivars mentioned, and it, the process will be adopted from the study of Gregasin in et al. in 2014, and the determination of the equivalent weight was determined by the was based on the method used by Rangana in 1995. So how did we do with the extraction process? We started with the procurement of the materials, specifically the calamansi, the calamansi fruits and the mango peels. So for the calamansi fruits, we extracted the juice and we subjected it to centrifugation to remove the solid particles or the pods. And for the mango peels, we heated it as part of the preparation for the hydrolysis part and sunlight it. And after that, we pulverized the mango peels. So for each of the cultivars, we did three trials. So three trials for Indian mango, three trials for apple mango, and three trials for caramel mango. So in the hydrolysis part, we used 30 grams per each per sample in each trial. So in the hydrolysis part, we used the optimum parameters used. 
we use the optimum parameters determined by Gregerson et al. in their study, we are found to be 2.5 uh, uh, 2 the pH level uh, to be heated at 100 degrees Celsius for 60 minutes. So we heated the the powderized mango peels with the, together with the calamansi the solution at 100 degrees Celsius for 60 minutes. After that, we cooled the solution and then we followed by the filtration. So after filtration, we mixed the solution with the with 95% ethyl alcohol to allow precipitation of the factory flavor. So we left the solution overnight to allow complete precipitation and in the next day, we rinsed the pectic fiber, fibrous pectin with the same uh, ethyl alcohol, 95% ethyl alcohol, and after that, we sun dried the fibrous pectin and then followed by the pulverization. So, so in the characterization part, we used 0.5 grams of each of the samples and we added uh, 5 ml of ethanol for it to dissolve and after that added by 1 gram of NaCl so this characterization part is basically just titration we titrated it against 0.1 molar of NaOH and the, the volume that is the volume of the NaOH needed is used in the calculation of the equivalent weight which is the weight of the sample times 1000 over the volume of the alkali times its tonality. So, in our results, we found out that for the purple mango, for the for the four, for the first three tiles, the results are the following: 2.04 grams, 4.6 grams, and 5.18 grams. For Indian mango, it had 8.5 grams, 7.7, .7, and 8.08 grams. And for apple mango, it had six. 15 grams, 6.73 grams, and 9.93 grams. So after that, we calculated the pectin percent recovery so that we could compare it with the pectin percent recovery found for the citrus, uh, citrus fruits and the apple pumice that other studies have tested. So upon this, uh, upon looking at these pectin percent recoveries, we uh, we found out that the pectin that we got from our mango samples can be compared to the the study uh, the pectin that was extracted in the in most uh, pectin extraction studies. So for purple mango, the pectin percent recovery was 6.8, 15.427, and 15.279. For Indian mango, which had the highest pectin percent recovery at 28%, 25.76%, and 26.94%. For apple mango, the pectin percent recoveries were 20 20.48, 20.46%, and 33.11%. So, in order to determine the presence of any significant difference among the, calcul uh, among the extracted pectin, we use the analysis of variance, and to interpret these data that you see here, you, you compare the computed F value to the F value at 1% and 5% probability level. Since the F computed is greater than the the F value at five percent, but less than the F value at one percent, we can say that at ninety five percent confidence level, there is there exists a significant difference among the amount of packing that are extracted. Also, the critical difference is found to be three point zero eight, which I will be explaining later. So after that, we determine the equivalent weight. For each of the for each of the mango samples, so for the caramel mango, the equivalent weight was 243.90 percent. For Indian mango, 285.7 percent, and for apple mango, 234.74 percent. Now, the equivalent weight tells us something about the gel forming effect of your pectin. So, it is expected for Indian mango compared to our caramel and apple mango to have the higher gel forming effect. And also, the, the relatively lower equivalent weight of the caramel mango and the apple mango may be due to the higher partial degradation of pectin during the, the determination of the equivalent weight process. So in our study, the, we found out that the obtained, uh, the obtained F value from the analysis of the data proves the presence of a significant difference between the pectin yields of the mango variants. Moreover, the calculated critical difference, difference value is, is 
Now, what we did here was we calculated for the we calculated the average uh, amount of pectin that we got from each of the from each of the samples, and after that we we calculated the differences among the means, and we found out that the difference between the apple mango and the Indian mango is less than 3.08. That means there is no significant difference between them, and the presence of the significant difference was due to the low amount that we got from the Haribo mango. Hence, we concluded that both, in our study, both the apple mango and the Indian mango were the highest pectin yielding mango variants. And also, the characterization of mango of pectin also showed that pectin from the Indian mango had the highest gel forming effect, followed by the pectin from the Haribo mango and then the apple mango. So, we recommend that other studies try using other variants of mango, such as Pico and Pahutan, test the obtained data using Duncan's multiple range test and other statistical analysis, and to finish the characterization process, which is the, the degree of the sterification and the presence of neutral sugars in the samples. So here's a picture of us doing the experiment. That is the expression part. This is the determination of the equivalence weight. These are our references, and that's it. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions for Mr. Opiala? I'm a fan of the community. Um, did you compare like uh, the amount of pectin uh, produced when you use the ordinary uh, inorganic acid in the normal processing or extraction of the pectin? Yes, actually the, the study of regressing uh, used mineral acids, specifically sulfuric acid. So their pectin percent recovery ranged from 15 to 20 percent in all of their trials. So when compared to our pectin percent recoveries, we had 28 percent and 22 percent, which exceeded the pectin percent recovery in reducing mineral acids. So the innovation in your uh, process is the use of the element C juice, and uh, the difference in uh, is there a difference in the pH of the uh, one with sulfuric acid and the one with the uh, element C? They differ? Uh, in, in no, no. It's the same pH Okay, any other questions? Yes, ma'am, please. It's not a question, but I would not just like to comment then, uh, Ryan Lawrence for bringing the uh, <laughs> Now, we thank uh, the participation of our uh, students from Philippine Science High School, all the way from Central Mindanao University. And thank you. Okay, our next presenter is Ms. Loli Planolil. Uh, she is affiliated with the Department of Chemistry at Ateneo de Manila uh, University and she will be presenting her work on carbon-13 NMR method for profiling of medicinal plants. Ms. Goli, please. Yes, uh, the title of our um, presentation is Carbon Tracking Environmental for the Providing of Municipal Plants. Research wants to more or less be able to translate the herbal medicine 
the herbal medicines into or help no not not maybe but help uh, translate uh, the herbal medicine we have in plenty to medicinal plant products. And the differences here are you have uh, for herbal medicines which are um, sold in the formal market, however for the medicinal plant products this, since these are standardized so we can we can sell it in uh, formal and as well as international markets. So uh, with that, I hope we can enter into the 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 500 no? <laughs> in the coming uh, 2050. For the uh, the Philippines can enter into that uh, with uh, some standardization procedures. So here are the challenges to be able to these are, these are actually standardization um, uh, points being able to verify identity of plant material determine quality of plant material as well as to detect uh, adulteration um, so that's uh, the number seven is somehow what we want to achieve with this standardization um, Here are some of the sources of variability in the medicinal plant products. So we start with the uh, same. Anyway, okay, here. So from origin, we can uh, it, they can differ from varieties of well genetics. Uh, in agricultural production, we have the uh, climate, age, as well as environment, soil, and water. And also in drying, maybe not enough uh, removal of water level. And processing, uh, we have degradation, say if it's heated and some uh, additives in the formulation. And in the commercial product, we have a shelf life. Uh, it can vary from one, say, how, how long it has uh, stayed in the shelf, and contamination and adultery. <clears throat> so, we all know that uh, medicinal plants have complex uh, compositions and are inherently variable. So, we need unbiased, multivariate um, methods for accurate analysis of plant development. So, MMR and LCMS are tools for plant metabolomics. Uh, MS is more well, I'm sorry. Where am I? Okay. So MR is uh, less sensitive, however, uh, LCMS is more sensitive, but there are uh, but, but then we use NMR for this particular purposes since uh, MS needed more um, video sample prep and our uh, yeah, this is a simple sample prep. <coughs> so between proton NMR and car carbon thirteen NMR, we choose the the one that gives simpler Oh, sorry, again. So the one that gives simpler uh, spectra, uh, the carbon-13 MR, although it requires greater time, so an average of around two, two hours. And then, uh, since you use the proton uh procedure for for obtaining carbon-13 NMR, uh, we get singlets only. And it has a um, spectrum are magnetic field independent, so it means you can compare uh, the, the spectra from, say, a lower, uh, lower uh, magnet, uh, magnetic field um, NMR, and a uh, higher magnet since uh, it is independent of the um, 
and the range is wider, so that's uh, for for a hundred megahertz, say you have a range of around uh, 200 feet for two, that's 200 ppm window, and we get 20,000 hertz for that uh, window, uh, and that's strongly affected by solvent and heat. The reason for that is our carbon atoms are in the inner uh, part of the molecule. So these are two tools that we uh, two statistical tools that we use for the time. We have uh, PCA and, and uh, HCA. Uh, or the hierarchical cluster analysis and uh, principal component analysis. <coughs> I'll just let you read the <laughs> the margin. Okay, uh, for the sample, we have, uh, for, for this particular uh, presentation, we use 128 samples from, ah, uh, from, and with the cell plants, our lowest number of sample is uh, six, and the highest is twenty. So, um, this uh, for the return, uh, for the for the carbon Spectra, we use Brooker uh, Abandis Leo 400. Uh, this is proton because we use the signals that we get from 10 to 200 uh, ppm. And the solvent we use is generated methanol. And the amount of sample is 0.3 uh, grams. The internal standard, which is also used to align the peaks uh, is one for dioxane. Um, it gives a peak at 68.182 ppm uh, versus TNS. And um, we took the relative intensity of the peaks that uh, we get uh, by assigning 100 to um, one for dioxide. So for the multivariate analysis is GNP Pro 14. Um, and we exclude the signals due to the solvent as well as the internal standard. And we use a bit size of 0.1 ppm. And yeah, we have the two statistical analysis. So there's, there's this um, some of the uh, representative of the 10 to be months, the carbon 13 animal. Then we have the two here, um, MP1 and MP2. The medicinal plants that I uh, use for the next uh, for the analysis here. Um, <clears throat> doing heretical cluster analysis of um, a divisal plant, the yeah, single divisal plant, we got uh, a clustering here which is due to the process. So this is as we see, so the one cluster here is received as fresh and the other cluster here is received as powder in powder form and then we we analyze those we got the carbon 13 and how we do the um hierarchical cluster analysis and this is what uh it, um what we got so this method is able to distinguish the different uh, processes So I try, we try to add, uh, say, add um, a sample from MP2, which is not part of MP1, for example. Then we got 
uh, luxury. Uh, by the way, um, you can uh, this is uh, uh, we allow the the program to do for, to calculate for us the optimum number of clusters. So yeah, the, the earlier the earlier chart gave us uh, an optimum of two clusters, and this also gave us an optimum of clusters of two. Uh, but then this one clustered the sample according to medicinal plants. No, uh, even though these two are quite uh, off, but then using another uh, or adding another sample, it uh, it, it it is it becomes part of the the other plant. So, so it means that it's it's close. Um, it's related closer to the the species of its uh, for example is rather than the, the the one that's in the So if we add another one, still we get two. So this is two uh, clustering according to medicinal plants. So the species are uh, distinguished by this. And then if we, we do the reverse, say we do the, we do the hierarchical cluster analysis first of the uh, second in this one, and still it gives us, um, it clustered according to process, but then this one has become uh, Malaysia, like the long Malaysian for the fresh and for the powder. So, although that's around for for the powder, it's about twenty-five uh, percent. We do say is that's a one over forty or so we need more samples to be able to uh, generate a more robust. Um, more So, same way we add another, other, we, we, we do the reverse, so we add uh, another medicinal plant, and then it clustered two, and then still the same way we added another one. So, it's generally accurate in, in its clustering. Uh, so, however, however, when we use all, um, one is uh, one sample here is um, clustered to the other medicinal plant. So, may balik na one over eighty. So, just to show the hierarchical cluster analysis of all the plant samples. Um, it's not perfect, but then it shows us that there are lots of uh, samples that uh, are clustered together. <coughs> so we can we can we can see from here that we have. Uh, this particular uh, medicinal plant is highly variable in terms of their uh, carbon-13 MMR. It, actually, this one has a lot of signals. In, okay. So I just want to show some. So just to principal component analysis this can show us some um, some species can show up in the clump uh, site uh, here by using different pairs of principal components. So this 
So for the conclusion and final work, and, and we just want to thank this HRDVS for funding and BBHP and uh, Philip here and Paramalytics and other sources of our samples. So thank you. Thank you, Mia Sloni, Vladimir. Any questions? Clarifications? So, yung sampung MP, magtakaiba yun, no? Magtakaiba yun. Okay, so, kung meron po tayong clarification kay Ms. Sloni, nandito lang po siya. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, last but not the least of a contributed paper we have. A uh, graduate from UP Diliman, BS Chemistry. She's currently working as a science research specialist under the Bioorganic and Natural Products Laboratory at the Institute of Chemistry, UP Diliman. She is also pursuing her master's in chemistry, master's chemistry degree in the same institution. Her research focuses on the bioassay guided isolation and identification of antihypertensive compounds from Philippine plants under the supervision of Dr. Christine Hernandez. Let us please welcome Ms. Rezaira Marie Astorga.